Right now, since 2024 is still a brand new year, there's only one thing that we know for sure about this year is that it is going to be a wild ride. And the reason for that is because there's already talks about more potential stimulus going into the economy this year. And that's not a big surprise considering 2024 is an election year. So really all bets are off. And I will not be surprised with anything that happens this year because I feel like the people who are in power right now are gonna go to any lengths necessary to make sure that they remain in power. And that's why we're starting to hear stories of potential cash injections coming into the economy. Well, what am I talking about? Let's take a look. Right now, Congress is considering uh, passing $70 billion worth of tax breaks for businesses and small families in 2024. And if this actually happens, people could start seeing money from this as soon as March of 2024. Man, what convenient timing, huh? Right around the time that people get their tax return money and then also maybe people getting money from these potential tax breaks. That sounds like everybody's getting their own small slice of winning the lottery this year, potentially. So they're looking at doing a few different things right now. They're looking at reinstating expired business tax credits. They're looking at boosting the child tax credit. Guess what this is gonna mean for the economy, guys? Hello, once again, to rising inflation because there is no question in my mind that if more cash gets injected into the economy this year, it's going to reignite consumer spending, which has been slowing down month by month because people are slowly being tapped out, especially when you look at where the credit card numbers are going, where the home equity numbers are going. You know, people are borrowing everything that they can right now. And then if you combine this with potential Fed interest rate cuts this year with additional cash in people's hands, that's definitely going to increase consumer spending, guys. There's no question in my mind that that's what's going to happen. And of course, that's exactly what the politicians in charge want for 2024 to have one last hurrah and make it look like the economy is booming that way they get reelected. Now, while some people might think this is great news, it's actually not gonna be great news in the long run because we already saw inflation tick back up in December. It went from 3.1% in November to 3.4% in December. And once again, it's due to the high cost of housing, guys. That's like the biggest issue that's facing the entire country right now and really the entire world you know everybody is having an affordable housing crisis right now now we don't really have too many details yet what these tax breaks will look like but if this goes through on the business end of things it would look something like this it would basically reinstate tax credits for businesses who spend money on research and development it will also give them higher deductions on things like equipment and business loans and one good thing that they're actually doing is that they're looking at making it so that it will restrict the benefits to businesses that are based in the U.S. So you're not going to be able to get these research and development tax credits if you conduct business outside of the country. But of course, another big part of this is that they want to extend the child tax credit because they say this will help moderate to low income families the most. And we still don't know what that could look like yet, but obviously that's a critical part of the reelection piece of this puzzle. So I'll almost no doubt if this uh, deal goes through that you're gonna see the child tax credit get reinstated. Now here we have basically a piece of land, even though there's a house on it for $12 million, but it's really just being marketed as a piece of land here to build something brand new. And the history of this house is so long, we can't even go through it all, but basically they bought it back in 2021 for 3.95 million and have been trying to sell it from anywhere between 15 million all the way up to 20 million dollars and everywhere in between since then trying to flip this house for the last two years and haven't made a dime just losing money and they have a hundred thousand dollar a year property tax bill that really eats away at this and they had the landscapers here taking care of the property just imagine the amount of money somebody like this is hemorrhaging right now and right away you have this economist, uh, Nancy Vanden Houghton. She comes out and says, well, the impact on the broader economy would be relatively small and probably not be enough to change our forecast for inflation. It's like, huh? 
70 billion dollars being injected into the economy by March of this year, guys? You're telling me that's not gonna have an effect on inflation? This person is dreaming right now. To me, this is exactly what it looks like. It looks like one last big injection of liquidity into the economy, you know, through whatever the government's powers are. In this case, you know, reinstating tax cuts for people. And that might be just enough to keep things humming along better than expected in 2024, which will bode well for the current administration. And trust me guys, I wish it wasn't like this. I wish, you know, all of this stuff didn't revolve around politics and people doing things to make it look like it's supposed to benefit others when really it's supposed to benefit them. You know, it's, it's just ridiculous. And one other thing important to note here is like, I'm all for tax cuts, you know, cutting the amount of taxes that all of us have to pay, but that's not what this is. This is a tax credit. You know, this is an incentive for doing something. In this case, you know, businesses spending money on research and development, which probably is going to mean just a lot of uh, wasted spending, which is also going to help keep businesses afloat throughout 2024, which is an important part of this election cycle. And then, of course, child tax credits, you know, incentivizing people that can't really afford children to have them anyways. You're going to get extra money for that. So you can clearly see that this whole thing is aimed at two sectors of the economy that can influence the outcome of the upcoming election. Now, over the last few days, and I've been seeing all these stories about how you have all these dead robots out on the road, especially in the Chicago area. It's just hilarious to me, guys. You know what I'm talking about. We're talking about all the dead Teslas on the road that people cannot charge because of the extreme cold. And I have to make fun of this because you know, it's, it's one of those things where like, we're going backwards in terms of technology, you know, like you know, everybody who buys these electric cars thinks that, you know, they have the coolest thing on earth now. It's something new, it's different. And it's, you're saving the environment, you know, all these things that are being painted the picture of why owning an electric car is the best thing ever. Well, this winter is proof that that is absolutely not true. And you know, as much as people want to think that having an electric car is superior to a gas one, this is proof that it isn't because uh, gas stations don't freeze up and stop pumping gas when it gets too cold outside. And trust me, I know I grew up in the Chicago area. I've experienced several winters like they're having right now where you have 20, 30 degree below zero wind chills out there and it's so cold that sometimes, you know, pipes freeze and crazy things happen. But guess what? People can still fill up gas in the car and you can still run that engine. But over there you have hundreds and hundreds or maybe even thousands of Tesla drivers stranded because they can't charge the car. And some people are like, oh, it's just a charging issue. It has nothing to do with the car. Well, that's not actually true because even Tesla themselves says that when you have extremely hot conditions or extremely cold conditions, that will significantly lower the range of your vehicle. So it can make people think that, oh, I still got 50 miles, I can make it home. Well, in fact, maybe you only have 20 or something like that because the extreme cold is putting too much strain on the battery and is helping people run out faster than they should and then they get to a charging station only to find out that it's not working or there's hundreds of other people who are already stranded there waiting and now boom you're stranded and i just think this is fascinating that this is happening right now because this has been such a major push you know there's been all these tax credits as well for people to buy evs it's trying to be painted as like the better type of vehicle to drive. It's supposed to be better for the environment, which is also not true, but this is all being put to the test right now. And clearly they're failing the test. And this isn't really to rip on people who drive electric cars. Like I don't care if you drive one or not guys, but what I do care about is a certain anything, in this case, technology being jammed down our throats involuntarily when nobody asked for it. Okay. You can drive an electric car just like you can have a long haircut, a short haircut. You can wear tank tops and sandals like I am right now, or you can dress in a suit every day. Nobody cares. That's your prerogative. And that's how it should be when it comes to driving a car. But yet you have the government trying to stamp out gas powered cars, especially in California, but even our national government is trying to do the same. They're trying to do these things also in other parts of the world. We're seeing right now that this is not going to be good for our future, guys. Like this is way less reliable technology than just the good old gas powered engine. 
And to even back that claim up, you have Hertz, the car rental company, they are selling you know, 100,000 of their EV cars right now because they've had too many problems, they have people getting stuck, they have people getting into accidents that end up totaling the car because the cost to repair these cars is much higher than the cost to repair a gas car. And between all the fender benders and people getting stuck and not being able to charge the car in weird places, it's been hurting Hertz's uh, profit margin so much so that they decided we're just gonna get rid of these things. Quick correction, they're selling 20,000 of these EVs, not 100,000. That's still a lot of cars to get rid of and lose money on. But they're saying that they're getting rid of them because they've lost too much value, number one. They're already getting crushed on the resale. They're also saying that the EVs get damaged and crashed more often and they have much higher repair costs, about 20% higher than other cars. And they specifically name that their Teslas earn less money per rental than gas powered cars. So clearly this is not good for profitability, which is very interesting because you know you have a lot of these car manufacturers also losing money uh, big time when it comes to manufacturing these electric cars and not hitting their sales quotas that they were hoping to. And you, you know, car dealerships all over the country are overflowing with these cars that nobody wants. And right now these things are being offloaded so cheap, guys, you can buy a used Tesla Model 3 from Hertz for about 20 grand. And on top of that, you'll still get a tax credit from the federal government for buying one of these things. So it can make it even cheaper. But they all used to be rental cars, which means they're gonna come with lots of wear and tear, probably gonna need that new battery soon. Hmm, how much is that gonna cost? An extra $15,000 maybe? Almost as much as you paid for the car? I mean, some of these cars they're saying have close to 100,000 miles on them, guys. I don't know how much, how much miles uh, these batteries are rated for in terms of like being able to use them before they need to be replaced. But I would imagine 100,000 miles is probably getting pretty close to that limit of the battery's life cycle coming to an end. And honestly, guys, if I just had unlimited cash to burn, I would go buy one of these used Hertz Teslas right now and just have it as a fun experiment for the channel and show you guys just like how much wear and tear does this car have? How many repairs need to be made to this vehicle now that I own it, a used rental car? How much is the new battery gonna cost? All of these things. The problems with charging it. Like, you know, some, somebody moved into my building the other day and they asked my wife, they said, hey, where's the nearest Tesla charger? And we were like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, you know? And the only one I could think of off the top of my head was literally at Target on Biscayne Boulevard, which is a good like 25 minute drive away from the house when you're factor in traffic. So you're telling me you gotta go drive 25 minutes just to go charge the car and then wait another at least half an hour and then you know drive another 25 minutes home? How much time did you just spend doing that? Oh, at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours? How long does it take to stop and get gas on the way home, guys? What, five minutes tops? Especially since there's gas stations everywhere on the way home. And I know people love these cars, guys, and I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't love it. You know, I love my car too, and it's fine if you love it. I'm just pointing out all of the major obstacles that stand in the way of people owning these things. And the problems are really starting to come out now of just how vulnerable these cars are to adverse weather. People also haven't really been getting what they've been paying for, especially since Tesla just recently came out and announced, hey, by the way, uh, all the vehicle mileage estimates that we gave you when you bought the car, well, it's wrong, uh, actually, it's about 20% less than we originally told you. So sorry, we lied. I mean, how would you feel if you bought a gas powered car and they say you're supposed to be able to get 400 miles on a tank of gas, but nope, sorry, it's actually going to be 320 now. We lied. So I think Elon Musk is a pretty smart business dude. Obviously he's the founder of Tesla, but this just looks bad, man. When you see all these people stranded and then on top of that, the news is reporting that people are calling Tesla for help. They're not offering any, you know, their calls are basically going unanswered. So people spend, you know, 50, 60, $70,000 on a brand new Tesla in many cases. And sorry, your SOL. Anyways, I just had to rant about that for a while because after seeing these stories and growing up in Northern Illinois and knowing how brutal the winters are there, guys, like I never had issues with my cars when I lived there. You know, like I've been through those brutal Midwestern winters and 
Never was able to say, oh, you know, I can't get my car started or something like that because it was too cold, you know? And there definitely was never a time when I ran out of gas because it was too cold. Now, if you want further proof that all the inflation numbers we get are basically a huge lie, take a look at this. There was a new study done showing how hard Americans are still being hit by inflation. And according to this uh, study, 59% of people that they talk to are feeling angry, anxious, or resigned while shopping for groceries, but mainly angry. And 72% of them said that groceries are where they're feeling the most effects on inflation. In December of 2019, a basket of groceries that cost $100 today would now cost at least $125. That's a 25% increase for anybody counting. Now this house is listed for five and a half million and amazingly there's no funny games going on here. They listed it back in September for 6.2 million but what we do see with this house is a massive price cut down to 5.5 million. That's $700,000 off guys. Property tax bill here is amazingly lower than the previous property also $11,700 a year compared to $100,000 a year on the last one unbelievable how much of a difference it can be when somebody actually lives in the house and it's their homestead but yet we're getting these ridiculous inflation numbers like just the most recent one saying it's at 3.4 percent huh they also found out since the start of 2021 food prices have gone up 33.7 percent shelter costs went up 18.7 percent and energy costs went up by almost 33 percent so those are the three things that Americans need the most in their everyday lives to function. Shelter, energy, and food. Then we get these ridiculous inflation numbers saying that it's at 3.4% guys. In what fantasy world is that true? They say when you combine all these things together, that overall Americans now are paying on average $1,020 more each month compared with the same time frame two years ago. So. In two years, people have now had to come up with an extra additional over $12,000 per year just to keep buying and paying for the same goods and services. And I'd be willing to bet that most people have not gotten a $12,000 per year pay raise in two years. That's a pretty significant jump in pay for anybody to get, and it's especially not happening with your average Joe workers. Maybe people in the higher level management positions, you know, People that have really good white collar jobs, they're getting those type of raises, but not the average person who works a normal job. And this kind of all comes back to why they're doing this, why, why they're trying to you know, inject more liquidity into the US economy this year, especially in early 2024, to have enough time for it to feed into the rest of the economy and get people all excited about this 2024 election. Like, oh my God, you know, this money is turning my life around and now everything is gonna be great again. But huge warning guys, if this happens to you, if you're somebody that gets one of these business tax credits or you get a tax credit for your children or whatever, even though that might be great, do not think that this means that everything is turning around. Do not think that this means that magically everything's gonna be better now. And definitely don't think that our government is doing it for you. They're doing it for them so they can get reelected. Don't fall for the tricks. You can take their money, but don't fall for the tricks. Get ready for just about anything to happen this year, guys, because it's only a couple weeks into the year. They're already talking about a $70 billion injection of liquidity into this economy. Who knows what can happen this year? It's gonna be full of surprises, and I'm looking forward to reporting all of this nonsense to you throughout the rest of the year. So if you wanna hear more about this nonsense, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.